thank you those who have joined me and those who are viewing this later as a recorded video. Now, my name is Roy Swanger. I'm Vice President of Database Upgrade and Utilities at Oracle. And that means, uh, well, just by way of a, a little bit of um, introduction, let me switch to my, my slideshow window. Um, I, uh, I manage the groups that develop the database upgrade scripts, as well as Data Pump and SQL Loader, the Metadata API, Transportable Table Spaces, so all the technologies that you use to migrate or upgrade a system uh, from one Oracle database to another, one Oracle version to another. And I've been working for Oracle for uh, over 20 years now, managing this area for over 15 years. The first thing I'll mention about this talk, which is about upgrade and migrate to Oracle Database 18C, and we are going to do a live upgrade as part of the talk, is that these slides, as well as um, all the slides that we produce for different presentations, are available at the Upgrade blog, MikeDietrichDE.com. And you can go to the slides link there to download one of or any of the slide decks that we have from open world from uh, user group meetings from our all-day workshops so this talk is going to be about upgrading your database to oracle database 18c which is available for download on most platforms right now and the presentation part is going to be relatively small it's mostly going to be live demo of an upgrade which i'll get to but I want to cover some basic information first. Uh, one of the first considerations about upgrading to a new release is whether that new release is supported for the upgrade. And if you're going to upgrade to 18C, then you have to be on uh, Oracle Database version 11.2.03 or higher. And this is true for any updates, revisions, quarterly bundle patches, PSUs, any of those are fine as long as the base version is 11.2.03 or higher. Also important to note is that 19C is already in the pipeline. We now have this annual release uh, strategy that we have. So there's always a new thing coming. And it's sort of like uh, you could kind of view it as iPhones or Samsung Galaxies. There's always a new one coming. And you don't want to have analysis paralysis waiting for that next release every year because there will always be a next release. And one thing especially important for 19C is you'll notice the difference between these two slides, whereas you can upgrade 11.203 or 12.101 to 18, you will not be able to do that when 19 comes out. So if you're on 11.203 or 12.101, now is the time to upgrade. Okay, so what's new about upgrade in 18C? The first thing is that we have a new pre-upgrade tool, and it's a jar file. Uh, it's actually an updated version of the same of the jar file that we had in 12.2. And this is something that you run to find any problems or any issues that you might need to address before the upgrade. What you want to do uh, to get this upgrade tool is get the latest version from the MOS note 884.522.1 that is something that we update about every two months. Four for 18C. So when you install 18C, you get the base version of the pre-upgrade tool. But if you then go to the MOS note, you can get build four, which has a number of fixes and enhancements. So let's take a look at running the pre-upgrade tool. And apologies if this gets a little jumpy. I have to change the way the screen sharing works here uh, and share a different window each time. So I'm going to now go over to my hands-on lab environment. And this is hands-on lab where 18C has been installed. And I can set my environment to use my database, which has a set of UPGR, because I'm going to upgrade it. And if we look at the database, it has uh, it's already been run, or it's already been started up. So that's great. And in order to run the pre-upgrade tool, I uh, run the jar file. So java-jar. Now I'm going to use a shorthand $OH18. That's 18C Oracle Home. 
rdbms slash admin uh, slash pre upgrade dot jar and I will have it go to a file in text format. Uh, now the OH18 environment variable is special for a hands-on lab. It just makes my typing a little easier. In the you could have this go to a terminal instead of a file, and we can produce XML output, but that's really used only by uh, the database upgrade assistant. Now you see when I do this, it doesn't spew a lot of stuff to the screen. What it does is it creates these log file and two fix-ups files. So it generates three files. And the first thing we want to do is take a look at the pre-upgrade log file and see whether there are any issues in my database that I need to take care of. So I'm going to go into gedit, um, edit my log file, and look at what it has to tell me about my database that I want to upgrade. It tells me what the SID is, the version I'm coming from, uh, the block size, some other interesting information. All my components are valid. That's very important. You want all your components to be valid before you upgrade. And you can see that this database has very few components in it. We keep the number of components in our hands-on lab low so that the upgrade runs faster. Then we'll have a few things to do before the upgrade. For example, this first one, it says it's a required action. We have to run this OLS pre-upgrade.sql script from the 18C home. So I'm going to do that right now. I'll go in my other window to do that. Uh, set my environment and run that script. OH18 rdbms slash admin slash OLS pre-upgrade.sql. Now this runs very quickly here. The reason for that is that this script's purpose is to move all your auditing records from the system schema to the sys schema. It turns out that in versions of the database before 12.1, if you had Oracle Label Security installed, your, sys, your audit records were in the wrong schema. So we have this pre-upgrade script that will move them to the correct schema for you. That way you don't have to do it during the downtime of an upgrade. Because while it ran very quickly in my environment here, if you had, uh, say, a banking system or some very secure system where you had millions of auditing records, moving those records could take quite a while. And you don't want to have to do that during downtime. Now, the next thing that I want to do, recommended by the pre-upgrade script, is I've got some parameters to adjust. My process count is too low, and my SGA target uh, is, is below the 18C minimum. We say this is recommended because you are free to run with bad parameter values for the most part if you want to, but it's going to cause a problem in the new version if your SGA is too small, if you don't have enough processes. So we're going to modify those parameters. Now I'll do that by creating a P file from my SP file. And that way I can edit the P file to change my parameter settings. So processes and SGA targets. So if I go to gedit, um, Oracle uh, home slash DBS slash init upgr.ora, that gives me my P file that I created. I see my process count is 79. I'll raise that to the 300 that was requested. And I'll just use a quick shorthand to raise my SGA target to one gig and I'll save that file. Okay, so I've done that. That's my second bit of changes needed. Now I've got some other things that the pre-upgrade tool is showing me, but note that these numbers three and four both say auto fix up. Now, if it's an auto fix up, that means it's something that will be taken care of by running this pre-upgrade fix up script that we generated. So there are some things that we can fix automatically for you. In this case, I'll start it running because I know it's going to take a couple of minutes to run. And what I actually have to put the at sign there. And what we're going to do here is gather dictionary stats and fixed object stats prior to the upgrade. The simple reason for doing this is it makes your upgrade run faster. The upgrade is simply a set of SQL operations on your dictionary. So having stats on those dictionary tables and on the fixed tables that are underneath a lot of those uh, views like v$sql, v$session, and so on, makes your upgrade run faster. That's why we want you to do that before the upgrade. Generally, we want dictionary stats gathered within 24 hours of the upgrade 
and as long as you have decent fixed object stats, you're going to be fine. So on my small database, that has finished, and you'll see it also reran the pre-upgrade checks. It says, yes, I have fixed my OLS system uh, move that was moving the audit records. Now, it doesn't know that I've manually fixed up my parameter minimum values, but that's okay. And then um, there's some other information about table spaces that we haven't looked at. So table spaces says information only. We're just telling you that some of your table spaces are going to extend during the upgrade process. We tell you how big the table space is now and how big we expect it to be after the upgrade. We're going to use some undo. We're going to use some temp table space as part of the upgrade. But because you have auto extend on for those table spaces, all should be fine. So great, we've already run this pre-upgrade fix-up script, so we're in good shape. So at this point, I can shut down my database in 11.2 and be ready to upgrade. Now, another thing I will be doing here is um, I have to go and copy my init file and my password file over. So in order to do that, I will go to my new environment. Well, actually, I'll start here, and I'll say uh, copy Oracle home slash DDS slash init UPG, upgr.ora, and I'll copy that to the 18C Oracle home DBS directory. So now I'll have that P file over in my new environment, and I will also generate my new password file. And we're doing this with format equals 12 because in each release of the database, we tend to add security features to our password file or to various parts of the database. Password file is one of them. And this will give you the new structures, new security features that get built into the password file. So now I'm in this environment and I can go about upgrading my database. Before I do that, Let's go back to the presentation and, uh, and talk a little bit about what's new in the upgrade itself. Go back to the, uh, to the presentation window here. So the, uh, the pre-upgrade tool, and I did mention that you can get it from note 884522.1. This is what it looked like a few months ago. We're actually now on build four. And you can see that if you had downloaded it there, we give you all of the new improvements and checks with each release. So you have kind of a change log of what's been done since the, uh, the original release of 18C. Now the upgrade itself is gonna be a Perl file. And this Perl file, is uh, called catctl.perl. It runs in parallel. That's This is something we started in 12.1, and we've improved it with each release. In 12.102, we uh, added parallelism, not just for the root uh, Oracle server component, but also the XDB component. In 12.2, we added parallelism for multimedia and actually spatial as well. And it's the same upgrade script, whether you're upgrading uh, a non-CDB or a CDB with one PDB or even a CDB with hundreds of PDBs. One script does it all and it will do it with parallelism by default. So we're going to look at this now and we'll, we'll uh, well, let's look at the slide first. So in order to run this, it's a Perl script. We'll use the Oracle Perl distribution. And I'm going to use the, the simple way of doing it, the DB upgrade script, but you'll see that in a second. And then we'll take a look at the output where we'll have all these different phases of the upgrade. But instead of looking at it at a slide, let's look at it live here. So let me go back to that window. And so we're in this window and um, we're in the 18C environment. So I need to start up in upgrade mode. So I'll go over here. Uh, but remember, I copied my P file over. So I want to create SP file from P file to get those updated parameters. Now I can start up in upgrade mode. So this takes, of course, just a second or two. And uh, once we are in upgrade mode, what we're going to end up doing is exiting back to the command line. 
So any minute now, we will be ready for the prompt. I don't like to type ahead when we're recording something like this. It makes it harder to see things. So now I'm back at the command line. Uh, I'll set my uh, directory default to the RDBMS slash admin directory. That, that just shows uh, or makes it easier for typing purposes. Uh, and then I will upgrade using the DB upgrade script. Now this is just a wrapper around a Perl script. It invokes the Perl script with the right Perl distribution with the defaults, except I'm going to give it a log file directory of slash home slash Oracle. So this will put my log files in that directory. And because I know some of these lines get a little long, I'm going to extend the width of this window just for demonstration purposes. So we start the upgrade. And what you'll see, we're in phase zero here. We'll come back to that. But let's look at what you see when you run the upgrade. First, it tells you all the parameter values that were uh, as they were specified or defaulted. Things like where to run, uh, where to run the script, the input directory. So if I wasn't in this directory, I would have to say dash D Oracle Home RDBMS admin. Where are my logs are going to go? Um, the number of SQL processes. I didn't uh, give it a number, so it's going to default to four for me. Um, I didn't specify much, really. So if we uh, then scroll down, it says I've got two CPUs. Here's my database. It's going to default to four parallel processes to run this upgrade. It tells me what components are installed in the database. You see it's not many, and there are a whole bunch of components I didn't install. The reason for that is that every component has an installation script or an upgrade script that runs if that component is installed. And some of those upgrade scripts take a few minutes to run. Spatial is one of the longer running ones. XML database, of course. Java can take a while to upgrade. And in our hands-on lab environment for a demo like this, uh, there's not really much productive to watching the Java component upgrade for an extra five minutes. So we don't install those in our uh, demo database here. So you'll see here that the first phase, it was what we call a serial phase, and it has one file. It took 73 seconds to run. So that was the very first thing where we're uh, just getting the database bootstrapped, making the fundamental changes to say that, yes, we're upgrading to 18C now. We do all the checking about compatible, all the parameter checking. And a serial phase could have one file or like phase one, which has five files. That means we're really only using one of those four parallel SQL processes because it's a serial phase. Things have to be done in a certain order. But now we get to parallel phase three here and you'll see that has 19 files and it's parallel. That means those 19 files will be run by four parallel processes. So as one of the scripts gets finished, uh, that whichever worker is, is, is finishing that picks up the next file to run and so on. And some of our phases are very massively parallel. You'll see as this goes along that some phases have dozens and dozens of individual scripts that can be run. So what we've done over the last few releases is we've gone into our upgrade, which kind of embodies 30 years of history and broken apart areas that could be done more efficiently in parallel and then kept other areas where we had to do things serially in uh, in a time ordered format. So phase five is serial with seven files, but here we are in phase nine with 66 files. And as you can see at the top, we're eventually going to get to phase 108. Now it's going to do that over the course of a total of about 15, 16 minutes on my laptop. So while that's running, there's not that much more to see here uh, right now. So let's go back to the presentation while this runs, and then we'll come back and check on progress. So switching back to the presentation for screen sharing. Let's see what else I have to say here. Uh, so we've already looked at the, uh, at the parallel upgrade screen. And so you don't have to see that. That's what we are seeing live there. Now, if you don't want to use the command line upgrade, you could use DBUA. 
Um, personally, I prefer the command line upgrade for several reasons, but about 20% of our customers will use DBUA, at least on occasion. The reason for that is, in general, a GUI can be viewed as easy, easy to use. It kind of walks you through the steps of doing the upgrade. Um, so that's nice. It's got that wizard-based format. It will automate some of the pre-upgrade steps for you. We say partial here, partial pre-upgrade automation, because some of the pre-upgrade steps, like, say, running the OLS pre-upgrade script, you would still have to do manually. And that will happen to any with anything that might be time consuming or uh, something that might require special privileges or anything like that. So it's not 100% that DBUA can actually handle all the pre-upgrade steps for you. It will give you a parallel upgrade, but while you can specify the number of parallel processes used for the upgraded command line mode, you cannot specify that in, uh, in the DBUA. It will always choose eight. And there might be times when you want to throttle that back and say, I, I only want two parallel processes, say, because I've got a bunch of other things running on this system. One of the nice things is it does let you create a guaranteed restore point as part of your upgrade process. You could do that manually, of course, in the command line upgrade, but it makes it easy here. Um, the activity and alert log disappeared in 12.2. They're actually, I have to update this slide. They've reappeared in 18. However, uh, the activity log and the alert log in 18, they don't refresh automatically. So you can pop up a window showing the upgrade log file, however, but it just shows you a snapshot of it. And every time you want to see uh, the current state, you have to refresh it with a refresh button. So that's kind of clunky right there. Uh, it does have a nice silent mode for you. Um, but really the other reason that we often don't recommend the DBUA is that while we can up, update the upgrade scripts, the pre-upgrade scripts several times a year, and we do for the command line upgrade, generally, if there's a problem with DBUA, it doesn't get fixed to the next release. And we saw that several times in 12.2. So for my money, I like uh, the command line upgrade, but the DBUA is, of course, still there. I will show you in a minute, though, uh, an even more interesting thing that's coming down the pipe that uh, might replace uh, the DBUA in many cases. So that's the end of this presentation, but I've still got more to show you. So let me, uh, let me get out of this presentation here, and we're going to go back to our window and just see what it's like. So we'll go back to the hands-on lab environment. And here we are, you can see we're 23 now. So all of this up to this point, and I can scroll up this window a bit, we did catalog and cat proc. So that's uh, the catalog scripts are what do the core of the database, the dictionary tables, dictionary views. Cat proc is all of those Oracle supplied packages, for example, and all the things used by them, the tables, the package specs have to be there first, and we do the package bodies, then we can do views that are based on them and so on. And as you see, some of these are massively parallel, 94 files in this phase, 117 in that phase. And you don't get linear scaling with parallelism. That's why we default to four parallel threads. Um, if you run with four, which is the default, it'll run about 40% faster than if you just run a serial upgrade with one worker. If you go up to eight, you're only gonna wring maybe another 10 or 15% out of it, and it uses a lot more system resources. So that's kind of why we default to four. Once you get more than four processes beating on the dictionary, you often run into things like dictionary latch contention that can slow things down. Okay, so this is going to keep chugging along. Um, right now, we're still doing cataloging cat proc. Pretty soon, it will get into, um, in, into some of the other components that you might be used to. But while it's doing that, I'm going to uh, show you another little thing that I think is going to be very interesting to a lot of users. So we're going to do a new screen share, and here it is. And this is our presentation about that you can't get yet, but it's coming up later this year or early next year. And this is what we call auto upgrade. 
Now, auto upgrade is a command line automatic upgrade. And in some ways you could say, well, DBUA has silent mode where you can upgrade in the command line. And that's true, but DBUA's silent mode has a couple of shortcomings. One is it's not uh, restartable. If something goes wrong in the middle of a DBUA upgrade, it can't be restarted. And second is it wants both the source and target Oracle home to be available on that server. And that's not always the case. I mean, often when you're upgrading, you're moving to new hardware and you know, you might be buying your new uh, you know, Linux 7 box and you go install Oracle 18C on it and you don't wanna have to bother installing say 11.203. So, this is a command line upgrade, and it's meant to upgrade not just one, but many databases with no user interaction. So the targets for this are customers that have large environments, and we have some with hundreds, uh, thousands of databases that they're gonna need to upgrade over the course of, say, a year or two. Uh, the largest database a state I know of is a bank that has over 13,000 databases. Uh, that equates to about 4,000 production plus their development and test databases. Uh, but I know plenty of other uh, customers, telcos, other major manufacturing companies that have hundreds and thousands of databases. It's also useful if you have cases where you have databases that are not managed by DBAs, but you know you have to upgrade them. And that's what we mean about the no DBA on site. People, that it might be an application that's sitting out in some group somewhere. It doesn't get a lot of day-to-day -day DBA attention, but you need to upgrade it. The auto upgrade will be a big win there. As long as the source is 11.204 and newer, uh, the target will be 19C. It may end up working for 18C as well. We'll see when we deliver it whether we have time to do that. And the idea is that you'll have a single config file for as many databases as you want to upgrade on a given system which means a server or cluster. Eventually we will have this working for multiple systems, but you know, walk before you run type of thing. And we'll start with a single server. So you could have multiple databases on a single server, could be all different versions, 11.204, 12.102, 12.2. You give it a config file and upgrade all of them to 19C with just one command. And what will happen with that is it will run all of the pre-upgrade steps. It'll fix everything we find. If it finds anything that we cannot fix automatically, then we will prevent that upgrade from doing anything. But we will fix automatically many more things than we do automatically right now. For example, we will run the OLS pre-upgrade for you. We will empty the recycle bin for you. We will gather those stats, all of that stuff we will do that automatically if you use auto upgrade because you're kind of signing up for that saying i want you to do this automatically and with one command it will upgrade as many databases as you want us to and we also have oh, the screen share stopped ah sorry about that i forgot that when i go into uh, slideshow mode i have to uh, share the slideshow screen separate from the, uh, there it is. So hopefully that's better. So um, with one config, you can, uh, you can upgrade multiple databases and then there will be a job controller where you can get status, uh, deal with restarting, rolling back, and all the other kind of error correction that you might have. And just to give you a sense of what that config file will look like, it of course can take comments. It, you would have a, a logging directory. And then for each database, just a very short number of parameters that you would have to specify. The SID, the source home, and notice that source home could be the same, uh, could be different for different databases if they're running different versions. Um, the DB name, when do you wanna start? You can actually schedule these things out into the future if you don't want to upgrade everything at once. And there's some optional parameters as well. Uh, this is how we're delivering it right now. You would have to build this file by hand, but uh, one of the things on our to-do list will be to be able to generate this information because uh, from any given database, we can of course figure out what is the 
uh, DB name, the SID, the source home, and all that. So that's what our auto upgrade is going to do. Now we're going to go back um, back into our hands-on lab environment and make sure I get my screen sharing here. And let's see how far along we are. Okay, we're at phase of 108. Let's scroll back and see what we've done so far. We have, um, we've done our catalog and cat proc, and now um, after that, we start upgrading the components in the database in dependency order. For example, Java has to upgrade first because Java is used by XDB. And XDB is a manual component starting in 12.1, or a, not manual, mandatory component starting in 12.1. If it's not in your database, we will install it. So this is the XDB section. You can see an aggregate. It took about a minute and a half or so. Ord M. This is multimedia. Now this is still there in 18C. Uh, if you haven't seen the news, if you're a multimedia user, multimedia has been de-supported in 19C. So that will be something to plan for. If you're a multimedia user, don't wait for 19C. Go to 18 and then figure out what you're gonna do with that multimedia functionality. Um, but multimedia uses XDB, so it comes next. Spatial SDO, for spatial data option, also uses XDB. Now notice that these um, actually didn't do anything. We went through all those phases, but those components weren't installed. So they took essentially no time. The same is true of um, expression filter, rules manager, and so on. And then we have some final component scripts and final upgrade scripts. These final upgrade scripts are doing some uh, movement of tables such as uh, maybe AWR tables and other things that have to get restructured and moved into new back into the sysox table space. So this is going. Um, now, one of the interesting things I mentioned was that DBUA is not restartable. And that's actually very important because you never know what might happen in the middle of an upgrade. Whoops, I just hit control C. Well, that just killed my upgrade right in the middle. What do I do? Well, what I can do in this case is I can uh, just restart the upgrade with the dash capital R. Now I'm gonna actually eliminate my log file directory here because I don't wanna stomp on my old log files. But if I run my upgrade with dash capital R, what it will do is it'll go figure out where did my upgrade stop? Yep, I was in phase 99 before. So 98 was the last phase I finished, and it goes right to phase 99, restarts where I left off, and it will finish up my upgrade for me. So while that's going, um, let's just take a look in the log file directory I used originally, uh, slash home slash Oracle. And let's see what we have here. Uh, Okay, we've got a bunch of stuff that isn't related to the upgrade because it is, after all, my user's home directory. But you'll see that we have these cat upgrade log files, cat upgrade 0, 1, 2, 3. That's because I had four parallel processes uh, running this upgrade. So cat upgrade 0 is going to be the biggest one by far. Uh, that is always in action. So for any of those serial phases, that's where the output's going to go. Cat upgrade 1, 2, and 3 will also have information um, but only when there are parallel phases. So if I uh, ls-l cat upgrade star.log, you'll see the difference in size here where uh, cat upgrade zero is quite big. It's 33 meg right now. The others are much smaller. Uh, other things that we see here, some output from catcon. Now catcon is a, a utility, a, a Perl utility that's used for distributing things in parallel. It was a really developed with multi-tenant in mind to distribute things across multiple PDBs, but we can use it internally just as a way to distribute work across multiple Perl processes, even in a single CDB. And it has a list file for any errors. Um, we have uh, a data patch upgrade.error and data patch upgrade.log. So one of the things we will do as part of the upgrade is we run data patch. 
The reason we do that, let's uh, think about what we have here in 18C. If I go, if I, um, if I go into SQL Plus here, you'll see that I'm running 18.3.0.0.0. That means 18.1 was the base release. 18.3 is actually the second quarterly update. That's what we made available for download on multiple platforms. So the reason we have those data patch logs, and I'll list them again, is that as part of the upgrade, uh, after the upgrade, we actually run the data patch to patch the database to bring it up uh, to, to perform the SQL changes that are needed on top of the base release. So it's just like applying the quarterly update to any 18C database. We do this automatically for you as part of the upgrade. Um, so the upgrade itself is going to take a little bit longer to run. As you can see, it's 108 uh, phases. Um, we're on 103 right now. There's not that much else exciting to see here. After the upgrade, we'll run UTLRP, gather stats, and so on. But what I'd like to do now is I'm going to switch over. And if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, you can put them in chat or you can uh, speak them. I believe we also have that. Yes, I do have uh, that turned on that you can speak in live session if you want. But any questions about upgrade while the last few phases are running, I'd be happy to take them. I can see we're just finally finishing up now. And if we don't have any questions, what I'm going to do is go back to my um, desktop. And at the end of this, we'll show you just a little bit of the summary of the upgrade, how long it took, and so on. Okay, so the upgrade finished. Now, in this case, the upgrade total time is completely misleading because that's only the time since the restart. So let's not get too hung up on that. Um, if I go to my uh, log file directory, and what you'll see here is that in addition to, oh, actually, no, it will be my new log file directory. Now you, hmm, that's a good question. Where was I? Um, I had thought I had set my directory to, oh, let's see where it put, um, when it restarted, it'll tell me where my log files are. So that's kind of useful. Uh, here it is. Log file directory is right here. You can see we put it in a generated um, directory name so that there's uniqueness. And here are the log files here, or I'll do it in a easier to read look. Um, in addition to my four parallel upgrade log files and the uh, data patch stuff, we have this upgrade summary.log. And what this is, it, it's the same thing that you used to get out of the post upgrade status script. It tells us what the components are in the database. Um, whether they are in uh, a good status. Now it says upgraded here. Uh, it does not say valid. The reason for that is very simple. We haven't run UTLRP yet. So what we would do next in this database is we would uh, run UTLRP. Oh. We would start up the database first. and then run UTLRP, and that will make our components valid. It also tells us how long each of these took. Um, and as you can see here, the server took 12 minutes. Most of the other stuff was pretty short. Uh, final actions, uh, five minutes. That's actually fairly long for that. That included 
and then we ran our data patch. And as I mentioned earlier, the grand total upgrade time in this case is not accurate because we restarted the upgrade in the middle. But the upgrade summary log is your first indicator of did my upgrade succeed? First of all, were there any errors after my upgrade? No, there weren't. You look here, there aren't any errors showing up here. And all my components look like they're in good shape, the full version. So uh, looks like this was a good upgrade. Not a surprise. I'm doing it as a demo that I've done a whole bunch of times. So glad everything worked. It would be kind of scary if it didn't. Um, the main thing, uh, the one thing I do want to mention is this upgrade ran pretty fast. Uh, in aggregate, it would be, say, 15 minutes or so on my laptop. Um, I obviously did not have a lot of objects in the database, didn't have a lot of components in the, in the database. In general, on a production hardware, uh, we would expect an upgrade to run anywhere from 20 to 90 minutes, depending on how complicated the database is and how many components you have installed. More parallelism, it'll run faster. Having good stats makes it run faster. But in general, this is the process for upgrading to 18C, whether you're upgrading from 11.2, 12.1, 12.2, 2, doesn't matter. So I'll go back and one more time ask if there are any questions. And if not, we'll be wrapping up. Okay, well, uh, not seeing in any questions in chat. I'll just thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that uh, my one little glitch of not screen sharing for a little bit wasn't too bad and uh, that everything else was uh, good and visible for you. If you have any questions, as always, you can go to the upgrade blog, uh, mikedetrickde.com, and uh, we always have the latest information there.